That's our big question mark, Keith, is, uh, is certainly how things are going to happen. You know, uh, with so many new faces, nine, uh, it, it's just, it's going to be a, a work in progress. Certainly, I'm saying this in a very positive way. It's going to take time, but I I'll, I'll like our ceiling. Um, I, I like the way they approach practice every day. They've been just, uh, I, I, this is my 30th year of, of being a head coach. And I, um, most of the years, uh, you, you really, really enjoy your team. But there have been a year or two when some of them, they're just, it's just hard. They're hard to deal with. And, and, and uh, uh, it just, it, it, if it was easy, I guess they say everybody would want to do it and could do it. And so that those years make it challenging, but they, they also make it rewarding when you get a group like we have now that that enjoys practice. I think they enjoy being around each other. Uh, just a, a real good group of guys. Uh, we're a long way from where we need to be in terms of our basketball, but but they they're enjoyable to practice. They're coachable, and they give you their best effort. And I think that counts for a lot. Um, I know our, our coaching staff feels the same way. Um, uh, not perfect. I don't mean to say that, but they're, they're, they're enjoyable to coach. So, uh, I, I like that fact, but it's just, it's going to take a little time because we have so many new guys, uh, junior college guys, high school guys, and then uh, obviously mixing them in with our, some of our returning uh, veterans is, is going to take just a, a little time before, uh, we get to our fin finished product. But I like, like I said, I like our ceiling. Coach, this, um, Maybe going against the the grain or what you just said, but are you at a? I know it's early, but are you at a point yet where you can you could reel off a? You know, if you if, if we had, you know, I've been asked that a lot here over the last week. Uh, I I, I would say this: uh, I, I can probably give you uh, uh, about seven or eight guys, and yeah, I'll do seven. that. I, I mean, if you're okay with that, I'm not trying to be evasive. I'm just saying that's how. And, and this is, as you know, Glenn, this is a great thing. I, the competition, we never had that last year. You know, we had, uh, when, when, when we have guys that were playing 36, 38, sometimes 39, 40 minutes to game, it's going to take its toll on you. Uh, and, and it did. It took its toll on us physically and emotionally. But it was our best chance to win. Uh, playing even a guy fatigued it, with our lack of depth situation last year was better than uh, maybe maybe the alternative at that point. We just we just didn't happen. We had good players this year. We just have more good players. But the competition it literally can, has changed sometimes daily, and we evaluate as a staff our players. Uh, and 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 again, we're getting to the point where we would like to see a little bit of separation, but it it's tough. The other side of that is we're developing good depth and uh, uh, by, by the competition that we have every day. And I feel very comfortable right now with about 11 or 12 guys that, that I, we could put in, not necessarily starters, but I think we're at about seven or eight. I think, I think uh, uh, certainly uh, Tay Hardy is going to be, you know, the, the, the signee from Pearl River Community College has, has not, <clears throat> excuse me, disappointed in practice. Uh, Jay Malone, how, however, has had some good days. And, you know, Jay's, Jay's a returning starter. So that ought to tell you something right there. We've also worked Justin Johnson, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, guard from um, uh, one of our other junior college signees. He, he, he's able to give us a, a, a backup at the one. But I, I would say if we had to start today, it would probably t be Tay Hardy. Uh, if Justin didn't start at the one, I think, I think he would have – he's going to be uh, – tough to unseat maybe at the two off guard position, but certainly a combo. Um, and again, I want to mention uh, Jay Malone in there because Jay gives us a, a ability to play Tay Hardy at off the ball as well. Um, so I think those three guys in those two spots um, at the, at the three position. Uh, and then, and then let me add at the, at the two position, primarily at the two, Jerron Pierre has, he's got a chance. The freshman has got a chance to be really, really good for us. Um, in the three spot, I think you would certainly look at Drain uh, as, as, as being uh, – I don't see him being unseated there. Uh, in, the, in the post, I, I, think it, uh, I think if we had to start today, it would be uh, Tyler Mormon or DeAndre Pinckney. Uh, may, DeAndre's been uh, nursing one of his injuries that he had last year in junior college. Not, nothing bad, just, just a, a typical in terms of his rehab. He's still out there getting after it. 
Um, so I think one of those two guys, and I think, and then of course Tyler Tyler Stevenson has has been really good. Uh, but I'd also want to Mark Mark Jackson, a kid from Estonia, six six, very skilled offensive player, uh, has has really really come on. Artur Kanatsik, obviously, this is a player. You know, Artur starts thirty some games for us last year. So if we can put things in perspective, maybe for for our, our fan base, you've got Jay Malone who started. Uh, virtually every game that he was here uh, before he became ineligible and uh, now has regained his eligibility. He's having a, uh, not, not in a bad way, but he's having a harder time regaining that spot kind of tells you where we were. Artur Kanatsik starts most of his games. Uh, you know, he's, he's going to be uh, probably coming off the bench in a backup role, which I, which is good. They're, they're great with it. No, no problem there. They, they want to win. Um, uh, so I think I think those guys. I, I think I mentioned seven or eight guys. I think that could possibly start. I'm mentioning some other guys. I think that would that are that are going to be certainly in the playing rotation. Uh, uh, Angel Smith has had, had some good days for us. You know, broke his. He started one game last year. The game he starts, he breaks his wrist. He's a long, long guard, uh, and and he's played well. So I've mentioned, uh, you know, ten or eleven guys. I think that that you're gonna gonna see in our normal rotation. We're gonna have the ability to go uh, go much deeper into our bench than we did last year. Coach, um, you mentioned uh, DeAndre Pinkney. I think we're gonna talk to him a little bit later today. What can you tell us about um, just his skill set and what's been maybe most impressive about him? Here, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote you a a a text that I got from him yesterday. I'm a, I want to quote this because this I'm a, this kind of says it all about him. DeAndre just yesterday morning at 9:29 texts me and says, "I want to be the best player I can be for you. I think I can be great. Do whatever you need to do to bring it out of me." Now that. I would hope that puts in perspective, one, the type of young man, how driven he is. He's a talented player, 6'9". Uh, uh, His body is really developing our strength and conditioning program. Um, uh, just got a bright, bright future. Joy to coach, hard worker, uh, can shoot the basketball. He can step away. You know, when we signed him, I, I used the – he's got a Kevin Durant type of game. Um, I'm not saying he's Kevin Durant. He, he's not seven foot, and and and, and he's. He, I don't know whether he'll uh, be a billionaire like Kel Kevin Durant is. I hope he does. But uh, he his game is similar to that, and the fact that he can play inside, score inside, but he can step away and shoot it a little bit too. Not a little bit. He's he's actually a very good uh, shooter. So, but he's done very well, Taylor. And uh, uh, I'm excited. I'm, I appreciate y'all having him home too this morning. I think he's he's he'll give you some good insight, but. He is, uh, he's been as advertised. Coach Ladner, you talked about Drain a little bit. And I know they may be talking in the past. Is there any chance that he could be go back to being that sixth man that he was a couple of years ago coming off the bench where he was so successful? Or are you wanting to start him? Or is that yeah, an option? Well, I think uh, he's really – he's so consistent out there. He, you know, y'all will probably get more words for him when y'all have him on here in a few minutes. Minutes. Then, then I mean, he is a very soft-spoken, quiet. Uh, but he he just simply comes out every day and does his job. And um, uh, he had a great, great. I want to. I tell you what. If 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 he came to me, and and it's I think it's worth a conversation now as we're getting close to the season. If he came to me and said, "Coach, I'm more comfortable coming off the bench," that's what we're going to do. He's earned that right. If if uh, but right now we've got him starting. But that's a great point, Neith. You. You you really brought something up. I, I've gotten so used to uh, him being out there and my confidence in him as such that I you know I just naturally consider a starter. But you know John Havlicek is a great example. Lord, he's he's a Hall of Famer, All Pro guy. And he he wanted to come off the bench, and you know and and certainly uh, Coach Sadler's last year he had a great great. Uh, we in fact Jeff Mitchell, our assistant AD, and I were discussing that yesterday how. He got so, he got going so much in the the run. Coach Saddle and them had late in the season that any time he the ball was kicked out there to him, the crowd was already standing up because they they knew pretty much it was going in and uh in excitement. So that's a good point. I'm I'm gonna have that conversation with him, and uh, we'll see. Coach, with the uh with it looking like the NCAA is gonna grant you uh, grant guys across the board an extra year, how's that uh, 
changed your uh, recruiting philosophy? Oh, for this gosh. Class? It, it's, you know, we had a, had a, a recruiting meeting. We have a recruiting meeting uh, once or twice a week. We had one yesterday. And, and you know, I, I, one of the things I told our coaches, I said, with, with that being said, I said, we were able to make a, 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 a big step this from, from last year to this year in terms of recruiting. For us to continue to grow, we have to make another step next year. But here's the deal. Most of our guys are underclassmen. We have one scholarship senior in Ladavius Drain, so he'll have the ability to come back, even though he's going to graduate. Now, his initial plan, because he and I had discussed this in the offseason prior to that, his initial plan, and, and we always have a plan in place for our players to help them uh, to, to, to play basketball as long as they want to and, and are capable of playing. And uh, he's going to have some opportunities to go overseas. So, you know, what he and I have decided, I said, there's no pressure right now. Certainly he, he likes what's going on. Um, uh, but his, his, his mindset had already kind of turned the other way. But he, now with that happening, he's going to reconsider. I said, hey, let's just – let's see how the season goes for you. We'll see how it goes for our team. Uh, and then, and then we'll, we'll make, be able to make a better decision as the – see, that's not a decision that needs to be done or will be made today, but as we get in, you know, toward the end of the season. But it does in terms of affects our, affects our recruiting a lot because it's exciting to have a lot of these guys really – the when you talk about Tyler Stevenson, as a freshman, he played roughly – David give you the exact figure, but he played roughly 100 minutes or so, I think, as a freshman. Um, not a lot, and, and so therefore, to have him really playing again as a sophomore eligibility-wise, you know, um, uh, is, is, is exciting, um, as well as a lot of our other players, and all those junior college guys, they're playing a free year, they're playing as really as sophomores, if you look at it like that, because they'll still, they'll have three years, counting this year, they'll have three years, so uh, it, it, we are going to evaluate, we I, we, I, I have no problem telling you what we, the way we left that meeting yesterday is we, we're going to come out of that meeting. We, we feel like that each week we're going to be able to get a clearer and clearer picture of who that our players, uh, which guys are going to fit into our future plans, maybe where we want to head. Again, we always go back to that vision of returning Southern Miss basketball to national prominence. And then which players are, are maybe good enough. And then, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we have to evaluate and maybe there's a player or two that's not quite up to speed and we can improve that position or improve our, his spot on the team. And that's the business side of it. Uh, and that, that's really, to me, to be honest with you, the most difficult part of my job because, again, we've got a great group of guys and none of, none of them would be easy to uh, certainly let go. But also you have to keep in mind that we have to do what's best for the program in the end too. So anyway, uh, the, the other thing, Glenn, to, to expound on that, and I see uh, uh, Ladavius has just walked in, is that we have, I, I don't want any, I, I told our coaches, whatever avenue we have to do it, junior college, high school, division one transfers, uh, whatever it may be, we want to keep all those avenues open and, and to help us get the right guys in here that keep moving forward. Again, we made a big step from first year to second year. We have to make another big step this year to next year. I know we're already looking forward, but recruiting is a, is a, is a year-round uh, uh, process, as you know. Coach, before you get out, uh, numbers-wise, I know you said you might have a scholarship, but is there any chance that the school or maybe Hardwood – I don't know how this would work – would maybe add some scholarships well, to the team? Well, I think – the, I think the rule, the rule is the only player that would be that within that category, we would be allowed to carry for one year the extra player, which in, okay. we only have one. So, for instance, if we had, let's just say, instead of Ladavius being our only senior, we had four seniors this year. This, if the school would allow, they would allow you to carry those four plus thirteen others. So okay. we're only going to, in a best case scenario, if Ladavius returns or we would have 14, but it's only for one year. After that year, you have to get back down to your 13 max. If that, that's how, the, how that's gonna work. So, it, you know, if he decides to go, it's certainly gonna open a scholarship, but it will not allow us to add two, only in the, only in the event he did, would decide to return. So uh, anyway, do y'all, anybody else have anything for me? And if not, I'm gonna put drain on. Coach, I was just going to say if you can briefly talk about your non-conference schedule and 
and what you like about what's coming to Reed Green and then obviously your first trip out to Milwaukee. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, very briefly, uh, of course, scheduling. I think I saw this morning where only 30, 37 of the 350 some Division One teams have ever even released their schedules yet. And we're, we're, we're roughly two weeks out. I, that, that's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I want to start with probably what I'm disappointed in. Uh, you know, they, 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 when they back the schedules up and reduce the number of games, you know, we had worked really hard to get Ole Miss on our schedule, and we were going to play them in Biloxi at the Coast Coliseum to open, and, and certainly disappointed that's not going to happen. I will say it has been, and, and thank, thanks, thankful to Coach Davis at Ole Miss, we, we're going to reschedule that and play them next year down there. Um, which we're excited about. And that, that certainly cancellation was a no fault of either one of the schools. There's a, a, a interest in playing, and I think that's great for basketball. Uh, I'll go on record to say Southern Miss and Ole Miss and State should be playing every, every year in every sport. But, and, and we're willing. We're willing. Uh, I, I can promise you that. Uh, uh, but, but anyway, with that being said, uh, excited about our con- – we lost a game at TCU, uh, which I thought – uh, was going to be a great opportunity to to kind of measure where we were as a team, uh, a Big 12 opponent there. Um, but I'm excited. One of the things that, I, that we've tried to do is get teams on our schedule that resonate with our fan base, um, that all, but also in a, in a regional aspect that that don't that keeps our team at home, uh, you know, at home, so they can focus on what they're truly here for, which is to help get their de- or to get their degrees. Um, Louisiana Lafayette, uh, we. We lost that game as well, uh, but that's another game that's a, that we've established. Uh, but the teams we got coming in, you know, uh, uh, certainly I think I think our first home game, I'm not looking at my schedule, but I think our first home game after we come up is, is Louisiana Monroe. Uh, excuse me, William Carey. William Carey is our first home game. We have Louisiana Monroe in, in front of us there. Um, uh, help me out a little bit, David, on, on, on who we have the way after Milwaukee. Uh, I'll talk to Milwaukee and maybe as David's kind of looking that up so we can comment on that. But, uh, you know, we go to Milwaukee. Uh, there's already been a change out there, but it was Ball State and uh, North Dakota State uh, and Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and I think Ball State's no longer going to attend that. Uh, we got we got some message on that. So it's a two-game event right now, but they're looking to replace uh, with with a, a team out there. But we're excited. that That's going to be a good opportunity for us. I wish, Taylor, that we had a few – um, uh, exhibition game and, and, and scrimmage that we could do, but we don't have that. And uh, so we're going to, you know, when we're going to play it, we're playing for keeps off the bat. But uh, great. I think those those are some going to be some good measuring sticks for us, for us right there. And, you know, we, we go to those places and South Alabama, I know, comes here. That's going to be a, you know, they're going to be one of the top teams in their league, just like they were picked to win it last year. There'll be another uh, preseason pick to win the uh, Sun Belt. And uh, so, anyway, I think I think that we you'll you'll see a, 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 a great effort and intent on our part to over the next couple of years. It got messed up a little bit this year to bring teams that our fan base has been used to seeing in Reed Green, but also can get on the road when we pay those back those home and home series back. For instance, Tulane, our fan base can get on the, get in their cars and go travel to those places and watch us play too. So I'm excited about our schedule, Taylor. All right, I've got I've got Drain here. He's ready to hop on. Thank y'all so much for your coverage. Okay. Good. Hey, Ladavius, I just uh, want to ask a question to you, buddy. Can we get you singing "Strawberry Wine" on the jumbotron, like during the timeouts? I know there's a lot of people that want to see this. Are we going to be able to get that out of you this year? I don't know. Uh, we had media day yesterday, and they nobody said nothing about it. So, oh, we got to work on that. Now. <laughs> Ladavius, uh, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Taylor. Well, Ladavius, I was just going to ask you what what looks different about this team uh, from last year. Maybe what how different you guys may be playing. I know you haven't played a game, but just what you see in practice, how different this team might look compared to uh, last year? Uh, the biggest difference from last year, we have uh, more players that uh, that are in the rotation. Last year, we played mainly six players. 
And this year we have more size and uh, more body that we can use. We're going to play a more up and down tempo style game this year. But well, Davis, how do you, with, with this new, uh, this new lineup, uh, how do you think your role changes this year? I think I have the same role. I just got to be more of a leader this year. Uh, we got guys that handle the ball. You know, I make open shots. Uh, that's what I've been doing so far in practice. That's what I continue to do. Well, Davis, uh, how do you feel this year about – actually, last year you were asked to kind of create your own shot. This year you get to come off screens with, with Tay and some guards and, and different options there. Do you feel more comfortable coming off screens with the shot or creating your shot? Which, how do you feel more comfortable? Yeah, I feel more comfortable coming off the screens than uh, actually having to handle the ball because that uh, creates more help opportunities that uh, that my defender has. Like, Coach always put me in screening situations because that helps me get open shots because my man had to help on the bigs, rolling to the basket and stuff like that. We have time for one more question for Ladegas. Yeah, Coach, So, Davis, what's the, what are the main things you worked on in the off season coming into your senior season? I remember Coach had said you you uh, knocked a little weight off, maybe you got uh, improved your quickness a little bit. Yeah, I just worked. It, I just focused on uh, losing a couple pounds, getting quicker, getting uh, more mobile um, as a defender, and uh, being able to come off screens and cut faster and stuff like that. Uh, can you talk about? Your transition to Southern Miss, how's it been? And uh, what's the biggest difference you noticed uh, moving into Southern Miss? What's the biggest difference in play or maybe style or speed? Or, or what is that? Uh, um, my transition so far has been great. Um, since I got here, uh, the coaching staff has been great. The players has been great. Uh, the trainers, they've been helping me rehab my foot from my surgery. And the biggest difference I noticed is it's, everybody's a lot more bigger than and compared to junior college. Uh, the tempo is much faster. Guys are a lot stronger. And you just got to go out there and compete every day. DeAndre, have you been able to, once you've gotten here, have you been able to get in the, into our strength program and um, add some strength or size while you've been here? Uh, yes, when I first got here, I was around 210, 211, um, now 230. So I've been I've been getting after it in the weight room and on the court. DeAndre, um, I guess what sort of drew you to Southern Miss? Um, what about Coach Ladner and and just uh, the program kind of drew you to to want to come here? Uh, the way Coach Ladner handled the recruiting situation between me and him is what stood out the most. I had a lot of schools recruiting me. Uh, when I was in junior college and, you know, they used to call me a lot three, four times a day, text me, and, you know, blow my phone up. And Coach Ladner told me, he said, you know, I'm not going to blow your phone up because that's disrespect. He felt like that was disrespectful. He said he's going to respect me, call me one time a day. And I was like, I'm cool with that. You know, I appreciated him for respecting that and him understanding that I had a lot going on at the time, you know, having to have surgery and, you know, COVID, not being able to take visits and all the schools. And also, Coach Spoon here, 14-year NBA veteran, played the same position I play. I feel like that is a big positive that a lot of the schools recruiting me didn't have, someone who actually played on the national level. So I feel like Coach Spoon can give me the tools and pieces that I need to become a pro, and that's the end goal for me. What has what Coach Spoon um, uh, taught you so far, you know, since you've been here? What has he kind of opened your mind to and maybe – you know, stuff that you may have not thought about the game before. Uh, he's just telling me, you know, got to always play aggressive. You know, even when I don't have the ball, just always be aggressive and play physical, play above the rim. And, you know, during college, I was, I would say some of the teams we played, you know, I was the biggest guy. And then sometimes I wasn't, but I didn't always have to be as physical and as, and as aggressive. But now I do. And I realized that, you know, practicing going against Tyler and Denaj and all those guys, I have to be physical and aggressive every time. Can you talk about you and uh, Johnson's connection? I know y'all are friends and everything coming in. Was that a big reason to come to Southern Miss too? Uh, yes, uh, me and Justin, um, 
we really became close after the JA45 back in the summer. And I actually played against Justin's younger brother in high school. And me and Justin, we just started getting in contact as the season went on. And once the season came in January, I, um, I called them and I was like, you know, what schools you got recruiting you? You know, we're from the same area and I played against them my freshman year. My school played and we beat them and he, he went out there and he played. And my coach, he mentioned to me, one of my coaches on my staff, he was like, you should think about going to school with Justin. And I was like, you know what, that's, that's probably a good idea. So uh, me and Justin, when we were back in Florida, we used to hang out a lot. And I asked him, I was like, you know, what schools you got recruiting you? He told me the schools, his top three. And I told him, I was like, I was like, go Southern Miss. I was like, you go Southern Miss? I said, I'm going to come. I said, we're going to go out there and we're going we gonna to change the culture. I know Coach Liner talks a lot about changing the culture, getting it back to, you know, the national level back when Coach Spoon was here. And that's our goal. Um, DeAndre, Coach Ladner um, was talking earlier about you basically had told him that you, you, you do anything for the team that you can and whatever player you need to be um, for the team to be successful, you will. I wonder if you can elaborate on that and, and um, basically what you'd like to accomplish in your time here at Southern Miss and what you'd like to, uh, to kind of turn around about the program here. Uh, yes, um, I believe it was yesterday, the day before, you know, I text Coach Latin, I told him, I say, I feel like I can be a great player. And, you know, I want to do whatever I have to do to help him win. Whether if it's, if you need me to get 20 rebounds a night, if you need me to guard the best player, whatever I have to do, I'll do it because I want to be a winner, you know? And that's, that's my goal. And if I can be a big impact on the offensive end and the defensive end every night, I feel like we have a good chance of, you know, being a top program.